about micromanaging. Mm. The job of a president is not to micromanage, is to put down bigger vision for his ministers to go and implement. Mm. But behind mind on the Abbasanjo presidency, he was managing conflicts to the point that he went to Ibadan, went to Abel Kuta, attended a ferry, ferry meetings and things like that. Buhari was less of a conflict manager because given his own personality, he, he did. But Tinubu doesn't have a choice, especially in the case of Rivers. It's an allegation. We are not sure he won the place. So for him to come back in the second term, he needs Rivers. So but he needs rivers not just for his own second term. Mm. Because when you produce a crisis, you can open up opportunities for calls for military rule. That's one. Two. Niger rivers, those have strategic importance. Extremely strategic importance. Because you don't we rely on fossil fuels. You don't want water court as a gateway to the delta. So you don't want um, stoppage. Third, is a f the, you are the fourth largest ethnic group. Wiki is from a minority group. Fubura is a job, but they are now saying maybe it's not even a job. That's a new line. So you can allow that place to rupture. And five is um, talk like Oluam of Lagos, mm. who may be your next governor. <laughs> <laughs> it's threatening that is in support of Fubara. Dokubo, in the very early weeks of um, Tinumbu coming to power, what you and I and all of us cannot do, the guy did it with mm. his big stomach and big weight. Carpet, red carpet was so rock. He even gave a press conference mm -hmm. with the Nigerian flag behind him. And that threat, the security advisors to the president who asked him to take it very seriously mm -hmm. because he has the capacity to, to, to damage. So he must resolve it. Whether their latest meeting who produce long lasting solution. You and I, we don't know. Because politicians are politicians, they will fight. But he has the, that, so these are two options. He's just use the carrot. He can use the stick. You know, he can delay their federal monthly allocation and destabilize them. He and Aquabio can meet, agree on one person, and declare a state of emergency, right? And, and, and the, the, the thing, remember, Ladoja was in a similar situation with um, Allah Fimalete. Uh, Fashola was in a similar situation with the Godfather. Ambody was in a similar situation with Godfather. But Fubara, Fubara did not handle his godfather the way godfathers are handled. It's too, it's too soon. Mm. It's too soon. He, he needs to, because he doesn't have a constituency. 75% of his commissioners were appointed by Wiki. All the many of them have resigned, right? It's funny. Yeah, huh? they, well, in their so, new in their new peace deal, they are, <laughs> he has to take them back. back. But I don't know what they are going to do, because uh, part of what a PC as a machine is mm. doing is to destroy PDP and destroy destroy Kokwanso in, in Kano. Mm. That of Kano, I think, they succeeded in removing the governor. So, one more case at the Supreme Court. So APC can control the place.
part of the strategy is if PDP controls rivers, the, the, the APC machine wants to weaken the PDP. So we have not seen the end of the conflict. That paints a gloomy picture. Uh, give me your expertise. How will you assess the role of the judiciary? In Nigeria today, uh, what reforms do you think are necessary to uh, enhance its effectiveness, considering that? It's a wisdom. And the new proverb is, <laughs> So for you now to get into power, you must allocate resources to vote garnering. That's not enough. You must also allocate a budget for the judiciary. And every election is now producing harvest for lawyers. If you lose, the lawyers will ask you to contest. So because they, they will look for openings for you. And consistently, the tribunals, the Court of Appeal, the Supreme Court, they are not looking at issues around morality. They are looking at issues around technicalities. Mm -hmm. Technicalities are so many that one can come up with. And you see the contradiction. But this is not the reason why you asked me the question. Mm -hmm. The reason why you asked me the question, I think, is, is about judicial corruption. Exactly. That is why you asked me the question. So, and there are two ways of looking at it. One way is to say, OK. How can you say your politicians are corrupt? Your generals are corrupt. Your police officers are corrupt. And you don't want your judges to be corrupt. I don't, I, I think that is not going to happen. You're not going to say, OK, one institution of all these organs of government should be neutral. No, it's not going to happen. I think it's, it's wishful thinking hmm. to say that those judges should not be corrupt. Hmm. Having said that, there can be a contrary argument. Why can't they have a higher moral authority? Well, that may be a legitimate argument. But that higher moral authority will not send their children abroad for education. Mm. Since they don't want to send their kids to school in Nigeria. Mm. And that higher moral authority will not build a house for them in Abuja. Mm. And, uh, and so forth and so on. Fundamentally, you can, you, each time the judges decide a winner, it means one of the essentials of democracy has been destroyed because it's, it, it's the people's votes that you have damaged, that you have discounted. Uh, in other words, you are saying the citizens are not important. Years ago, uh, the distinguished um, scholar Adam Aleko warned that never let the judiciary be the determinant of, election. of elections. But where it is, we are now in this dangerous slope hmm. in which um, a wise politicians will be calculating how do I put judges in my pocket and worry less about the elections they vote. About, the, about, about those who vote for him. Hmm. It's, it's, a, it's extremely unfortunate. That's quite unfortunate. Nigeria has experienced a significant social political changes in recent years. Um, what impact do you believe these changes have had on the nation's uh, democratic institutions and governments. And by those social changes, I, w I will be assuming you include the role of youth, Japa syndrome, in which people are checking out, um, increasing political assertiveness, the rise of OB. These are some of the social changes we can map out. And social changes where they are very nature continue to multiply in various forms. Mm. 
So there is no end to those social changes. And sometimes they correlate with the politics of the country. And sometimes they have significant consequences on components of democracy. So we've seen too in the last and previous election the role of social media. Mm. And I wrote a long book on that, close to 800 pages, in which social media is becoming of relevance in terms of mobilization, generating robust conversations over every aspect of society. But in, in, in closing that book, I began to make arguments between political spectators and political gladiators. Because essentially, the use of that social media as part of social change is producing more of spectators. Mm. They're making comments on WhatsApp, on Facebook, but cumulatively, in terms of converting that to become gladiators, is very weak. And this is Sarah reporter, you you know Shawure and um, his impact on social media and things like that did not translate to votes. Um, that dimension is there. But you also have the dimension in which people live within a political space called Nigeria, but they have checked out in their minds. Yeah. And when they check out, Part of what it means is, oh, well, whoever becomes your governor, that is your problem. You know, if you look at the election numbers, some governors have been produced with less than 200,000 votes, 300,000 votes. Yeah. If you say on a Monday, Lagos has 18 million people, has, have you produced a governor with 2 million, 3 million votes? So you can also see how the citizens have also lost interest in the process. And when they lose interest in the process, the energy to radicalize that democracy is lost. Because the more people are interested, uh, the better. And in the last election, as far as many young men and women are concerned, will be supplied the energy without spending money on them. Maybe that model in future will work for another candidate. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Prof, in your opinion, um, what role can academia play in addressing the political and judicial challenges in Nigeria today? So, and what role are they not playing as well? <laughs> the role they can play as academics is to represent people's voices to speak on behalf of people, uh, to conduct research in terms of the various components of that democracy. Some people are doing that. But remember, any time you complicate issues of survival, mm. whether they are pastors, whether they are professors, their first concern is not to the nation. Their first concern is to themselves. And if the concern is to yourself, you are saying, how can I make a good living? And how can I, how can my own children, as some would argue, escape from the problem? And you can see that by and large, there are two options. Those who have resources can invest in migration. And some people look at the state option. To those who want to survive within the state option, mm. as one politician said, you can't put food in your mouth and be talking at the same time. Right. <laughs> no. That's right. So yeah. that their voices become muted, mm. unfortunately. Mm -mm. So this is not the time when we have them um, abundance of professors on a daily basis challenging the state. Um, it's not the time of the military. And you can see 
how big people have criticized Shoyinka vigorously. They've no, been that's, dragging. That's, that's, and he had to reply to them. That was quite sad, honestly. Um, but even at that, we, we, we've seen, uh, despite the plethora of uh, prophecies of I mean, academia that we have, we, there seems to be a mute indifference with regards to this same issue. Just like you pointed out, they, are supposed, they, they should have been at the forefront in terms of research, articulating our, you know, positions on this. But this cold complicity on their part is, uh, is quite dangerous, strange, don't you say? Mm, well, so, you and I cannot argue that human beings should not bother about their survival. That is not going to happen. And second, that they should not seek opportunities or maximize opportunities for themselves. Yeah. Some with um, major credentials, especially major occupations, they leave the country. Yeah as in the case of um <laughs>